in this particular case, they're going to hear it. They might, they, they probably will give the feedback to the developers and the developers will. Smile and nod at the monitor while their headset is off. Okay. Black Desert's progression problem. Now, I would consider Zeroden Hunter to be much of a doomer. But in this case, he asked me to watch it. And I don't ever see Zeroden giving feedback really on the game in a YouTube format like this. That's when you know the game's kind of in a rough spot, guys. I'm just going to be honest, all right? Zethian giving feedback too? That's really bad. That's not good, okay? Because Zethian doesn't care about anything but his family, which is an objectively wholesome thing. But also, like, the game could be in a terrible state. He would just sit there and grind. But, like, if it's bad enough, man, he'll say something. So, like, if we got Zethian and Zeroden giving their feedback on something, bro, we got to... We, we still haven't had Jaehee Kim acknowledge that there's even a problem. So, we will see. Hey, that is obnoxiously loud. All right, everybody. I wanted to make a kind of a short video to talk about something very specific right now with Black Desert Online. So we're going to get serious for a second. And we're going to discuss basic... There's no way this dude just put his mask on when he said, let's get serious, bro. There's just no way he just fucking... And so we're going to get serious for a second. <laughs> okay. All right. I, 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 I'm serious. He's serious, man. He's serious, man. And we're going to discuss basically um, the progression path of the game right now and how it's kind of killing the game. Now, I know a lot of people have touched on this, like, kind of briefly. Um, and I wanted to really kind of take a moment and specify what our problems are and a potential fix. Obviously, right now, everything is going towards the direction of Sovereign, Weapons, and Deborekas, which is fine. You know, that's the direction of the game. We've already... Sovereign Debereka for every single class, in every single spec, and every single... There's no options. You only build Sovereign Weapons and Debereka accessories. That's it. It's five Debereka's and probably a Disto, and then... Um, just sovereign weapons uh whatever armor happens to fit your class and you really doesn't matter if you choose dr or evasion you're still gonna build dead god and you're just gonna make it tet that's it yeah you're just gonna build dead god and you're just gonna make it tet you could be a dr corsair no one would really give a shit um because that's the current state of the game um like we're and this is why people are upset to be really clear this is why everybody's upset it's because it's dead gods Debos and Sovereigns. That's it. That's it. There's there's no other options. There's no other like like things you can do. And here's the thing: what copers will try to tell you is that well, for PvP you can act, um um act actually for PvP you can you can do no PvP's dead because they don't want to listen to anything. So there's no PvP in the game. The only build is to build for PVE. Node Wars are dead. Siege is basically headed towards dead because no more Siege guilds can actually happen anymore because you, they have no idea what the mechanics are. So no Siege guilds can actually learn how to Siege. So when a current Siege guild dies, there will be no more Siege guilds to replace them ever again. Okay, which is why when we lose uh, a veteran guild, it's really bad for the PvP scene. Um, because again, Node Wars does not prepare you for Siege anymore like it was supposed to. So as si Siege is just slowly dying because Node Wars is completely dead. Um, and open world PvP is just, just dead, right? No, nobody decks any anybody anymore. Arsha is a PvE server. So the only thing to really build is for PvE endgame. And there's only one build for that. Like I said, Debos, Sovereign Weapons, and Dead God. That's it. All Korean MMOs do this. Terry used to have a heavy PvP scene and then they remove PvP gear and turn it into some sort of PvE gear. Yeah, I mean, that's where we're headed. Kind of let the dogs loose. So there's no walking this one back. But the problem right now... Yeah, I no, I, I, I don't even know if they can walk any of the PvP changes back. I spoke with a, a Korean player very recently um, um, in voice 
for a while about this, and he's pretty close to the situation going on in Korea. Um, like, he's pretty in touch with what's going on in Korea and, and all this stuff. And he basically said that Jae Kim's vision for the game is instanced um, consensual PvP only. Okay. And everyone can live together in total happiness with no toxicity. Now, I don't mind the no toxicity. Um, I don't mind the no toxicity. Um, but like, and I don't mind instance PvP or consensual PvP. Uh, I do mind, however, killing the instance. If, if you make the instance PvP unfun, no one's going to do it. Like RBF, right? RBF's not fun. RBF's not fun. Node War is not fun. Not fun. Node War is not instance per se, but it's kind of, you see what I mean? It's, you can only participate in Node War if you're yesed up. So it's like consensual, right? He just wants consensual PvP, okay? And he, and he wants toxicity removed from his game, which is not a bad goal to have uh, unless you deliberately, there's a difference between toxicity and rivalry. Okay, these are two very different subjects. Okay, um, there's some toxicity that goes into rivalry, and there's some rivalry that goes into toxicity, and you can minimize those two things, but what Jay did is he removed both of them. And if you remove the competitiveness, rivalry is competitiveness. Com if you remove the competitiveness from PvP, You've removed the purpose for PvP. That's the entire purpose for PvP. That's why I was playing Naraka a little bit earlier. Like, you, you see me playing Naraka, or you see uh, any of these other PvP games, why are you PvPing? To show that you're better than other players. That's just how it is, right? Um, you can do that in, like, a not-so-toxic way. Um, Divios does this a lot. Um, uh, GM buffs BA5. Go ahead, guys. I don't even have the game open. Um, GM buffs BA5. Um, I'm still not super happy about that, <laughs> about what happened earlier. So we're, we're just, I'm not, I'm not dealing with it. I think that Jay removed rivalry and competitiveness from PVP, and that is ultimately what killed PVP. I think that he could have taken away the open world aspect and the toxicity aspect of PVP, no problem. And yeah, there would have been some players that are upset about that. But if you remove what makes PVP competitive from the scene, you effectively remove the reason to PvP at all, okay? So, like, Node Wars are not competitive anymore. It's just, it's not, it's not an argument. It cannot be, it cannot be in any way debated. Node Wars are not a competitive game mode anymore. It is a free-for-all, for-fun game mode that everyone can kind of try to take a part of, and it's like, whatever, right? Um, the only competitive game mode we have is Siege, which players are still trying to do, but as veteran players quit the game, less Siege guilds are able to do it, and Siege will just eventually die. It's just the way that it goes. Uh, as far as open-world PvP goes, you can only open-world PvP another guild if they deck on you. Most guilds are not going to accept a deck um, from a guild that they know is stronger than them. They will only accept decks from guild guilds weaker than them. Um, and so you can't have rivalry or competitiveness anymore. Because everyone wants to fight down. Nobody wants to punch up. That's not how PvP typically works. As much as people say, oh, we want to fight. No, what they want to do is they want to fight um, people that are weaker than them. Okay. And so I'm okay with removing um, like bullying from the game. But you should allow guilds to deck each other as long as they're in the same like tier of guild. Like if they're T1 guilds, they should be able to all deck each other. Um, if they're... If they're, like, capped guilds, they should be able to deck each other. If they're uncapped guilds, they should be able to deck each other, and, and so on. Um, but, like, again, as long as there is no competitiveness in PvP, the only... what? Why did people come to AOS? Because it's competitive, guys. That's... It, there's rivalry. You're trying to beat other players. Now, AOS is a perfect example of where it doesn't have to be toxic, right? You're trying to get on top but you're also not telling the other person to kill themselves, okay, right? Like, so AOS, like, most of the time. AOS is a good example of where you minimize toxicity and you maximize competitiveness within the world of Black Desert, okay? So it can be done, right? It can be done. And in Node Wars, it can absolutely be done. 
in open world, you can absolutely have rivalry without having bullying, without having toxicity, but Jae Kim is not a PvPer. Okay? When Jae Kim pulls out a whiteboard, my asshole starts puckering. Okay? Because he doesn't know what he's doing. All right? But if you have people that are drawing on a whiteboard trying to create something that they don't have any idea what they're talking about, they're just PvPers making PvP systems for PvEers. They don't understand, right? Jay isn't even a player. No, Jay plays the game. Our developers, I'm sure, love the game and they play the game. They just don't PvP. Actually, correction, our devs actually do PvP a bit. Um, Jay does not. Jay does not. Okay, Jay doesn't PvP at all. Jay, Jay's idea of PvP, guys, is to get on a cannon. Do you remember when he talked about... Again, I talked to this Korean about this. He's like, yeah, no, Jay's like a cannoneer. He he doesn't actually like go in PvP. He's a PvEer. And that makes sense, right? Because we had a PvEer create a Node War system that he thought would be good. He doesn't understand that you have to have the competitiveness there. It must be there. And I think the problem that Jay has is that Jay sees competitiveness as toxicity. And it's not. Guys are competitive. We want to beat each other. Okay? Even if we're friends, we're trying to beat each other. Hell, even the PvEers, do you know why some of them are pushing really hard? It's because their friend... Oh, my computer went to sleep. Um, it's because their friend is literally in their guild with them and they're low-key trying to beat their friend in progression. They're trying to out uh, like out-progress their friend. There's always that competitiveness there, right? You're either you're out competing your own guild members or your friends or whatever. Guys are naturally competitive. That's just how it works, okay? You can't take the it doesn't mean the competitiveness is toxic, right? It just means that we are naturally trying to beat each other. It is healthy, right? It is healthy. And 95% of the game's population is men, or are men, right? So that's why I talk about guys, right? Um, I, I'm respectful to the girls in my chat. Girls can be competitive too. I'm not trying to say they can't be, but like generally speaking, when you talk about competitiveness, you're talking about men, right? Men. And so like, you can have competitiveness without having it be toxic, and that's what Jay doesn't understand. And he created a non-competitive PvP um, in Node Wars, and that's what's killed Node Wars. a lot of people are in the same boat is that there is only one way to progress this stuff and it's through cronstones okay yeah all of this to say progression is because pvp is all of this stems from pvp being because if pvp is there's only one way to build your gear and one way to be competitive and that's what's just like beat progression and you can't there's no there's no build paths or anything there's no diversity at all so you're just building you're just racing to build devos that's it there's literally nothing else to do it's through it's so boring. Jay's hammers, right? Every other game has like a million build paths at endgame that you can go do because every other development team understands that like you want your early game players to have one path, right? And then as they become mid-game players, maybe they can split into two paths or three paths or even four paths. But like usually it's like two paths in mid-game. And then in the end game, they can choose, you know, probably four different branching paths off of that. Our system is completely the opposite of this. We start with players that have millions of options to fuck shit up. I mean, we allow players to build Grunil, guys. We allow players to build Yuria, right? Like, we try to funnel them onto, like, one option, but you still have morons that build Blackstar armors. I-401, I'm so sorry. Not really, though. But, like, you still have dipshits that will it up right so like new players have a tremendous amount of options and then as they get to end game there's only one it's completely backwards it's completely backwards it's so bad it's so stupid and it's killed the entire marketplace right it's killed the entire market because eventually you end up in this situation where even new players realize okay so i don't need bassy belts i don't need crescent rings i don't need voltara belts i don't need ogre rings i don't need um uh, tongue rat earrings. I don't need narcs. I need Deborekas. So I just buy Debos. So like, should should I even sit on these other? No, just just go straight for Tet Debo because they're way cheaper now, right? It just doesn't make any sense. Narcs, yeah, but they're free, right? So like, it's just boring. 
It's boring. In the early game, players are having a great time. I would argue that Black Desert probably has the best early game experience in the genre right now. Um, but we will see. We will see. Because of how much easier it is to pick up and play the game and just, like, catch on, the main story has been updated a tremendous amount, right? Um, like, it, it is what it is. Uh, yes, new players, just buy Tet Debos. Um, Kippy, I understand that you're trying to be sarcastic, so I'm going to try to take that as constructive. Uh, new players should absolutely build Tet Debos. So they go... So the, the progression path is you start with Naru, right, guys? And then you make your Naru into Tuvala. Okay, and your Tuvala becomes Kaposha, Pen Kaposha. Okay, and then and then the Pen Kaposha becomes Tet Debos. That's yeah, that is that is how it works, right? Because you're going and like to be clear, you are still getting distos, if that helps. You're getting distos to sit on in the mid-game. But aside from distortion earrings, it's just hey, should I get a pen ogre ring? No, you should get a Tet Debareka necklace. I think we can all agree that that's definitely the play now. Right? Should I get um, a pen Voltara? No, you should probably just get a Tet Debo belt. And I think that a lot of people probably agree with me on this. Right? Um, the only, like, when I say pen Kaposha, you're going from Tuvala to Kaposha. And right around the time you're getting Kaposha, you will get your two Jatina pens. I'm not saying you're, you're going to skip your Jatina pens necessarily. Um, but you're going to get your two Jatina pens, and those are just free. Right? And outside of your two Jatina friends and then your free Kaposhas, you're basically going right to Debos. And that's 100% a fact. Pendisto 50 bill now, just like Tet Debos. So yeah, same shit. Exactly. Yeah, like I'm not lying and I'm not being unreasonable with how I say this. So I know it's like, oh yeah, new, brand new player. All right, level one, you should just a bunch, save up for a Tet Debo. No, stop being extremist about it. Shut up. You know what I mean. Okay, you're just trying to virtue signal. But Jay's hammers are going away. So what what the, what does that leave us with? Cronstones, which is fine. I understand. Oh, it also means cronstones are incredibly valued. Um, cronstones are the these. By the way, these Jay's hammers that they marketed for. Wait, I don't even have the game open. The Jay's hammers that they marketed for so hard um, are completely useless. Those Jay's hammers of precision that a new player is supposed to sell for 30 billion are completely useless. There's not a single accessory in the game that those are useful for. And, it, and it's going to keep getting worse. So, like, you can't sell it anymore except to people that don't know any better. And eventually they won't sell it all. So, like, new players can't get their 30 bill from their hammer, um, which is a huge gatekeep from the players that did get their 30 bill from the hammer. That's a massive amount of money for a new player, right? It's, that, that's just rough. That's right. And that you can use silver to buy cross I got that. You can buy them right off the vendor. You can get costumes if you're lucky off the marketplace. Got it. But my issue with the way the game is progressing, and I think a lot of us are in the same boat, is if you consider how progression works in this game, that be it that it needs cron stones to achieve pinnacle gear, then when you do pinnacle content, you should be getting something that is helping you progress that pinnacle gear. In this case, if cron stones are what you need to progress or when you do pinnacle content like boss rushes or um the guild boss rushes that just came out or even olin's there should be dailies that are rewarding you with cronstones there should be cronstone bundles that you're being rewarded out of those boxes you should be getting cronstones in larger quantities from bosses it shouldn't just be Kafir stones anymore. Because when Kafiris was pinnacle content, we were having things that rewarded us with Kafiris. Right no. now, there's only one way to get... No. 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 Okay, so we have a fundamental issue with the game. And this is a problem that a lot of players have. Is players' feedback is to just double down on the current system instead of fixing the problem. Just to be clear. Um... The solution to the cronstone issue is not to require more cronstones of players. It's like the solution is to require less cronstones from players so that they're less like you just don't need them anymore, right? Like right now, in fairness, the solution for cronstones. What the fuck? Okay. Um. The solution for Cronstones right now, guys, is to tank the Devo market. If everything's at minimum price, 
We don't have to worry about using cron stones to click our accessories anymore, right? We legitimately don't have to worry about crons to click our accessories anymore, right? from the game for free that isn't like I'm going to grind in circles and that is doing Pit of the Undying. And I think this is a big part of the problem with BDO in general is that Pinnacle content doesn't give us means to progress our Pinnacle gear. Yes, we do. I don't like Zeroden's feedback on, to get back on subject here, I don't like Zeroden's feedback on this because I don't think that this acknowledges the fundamental issue. We need to require less crime stones for progression, plain and simple. Cron stones need to be required less. You do, the solution is not to make them more accessible. That will simply kill the marketplace more. Okay? Because now everybody can just do a bunch of taps. Okay? Um, all the time. And then once the, the supply, once the demand is gone, the supply is always going to be there. The supply is going to be insane. Because now the only good places to grind are the Debareka spots. So it's, it's basically going, we're headed to a spot with Debos where everything's just bottomed out at min. Everything's just bottomed out at min. Just flat out, plain and simple. And so, like, supply will always be there. Demand. Mm, mm. This Cronstone fix doesn't fix the fundamental issue with the progression system, which is it's one-dimensional. It's horrible. It's plain. It's simple. Nobody likes it. Um, it also requires too many Cronstones. Cronstones are valued much higher now than they used to be uh, because they're three mil from the vendor, unless you get them from the marketplace, uh, in which case you're getting like less bang for your buck than you used to when I did it, okay? So it's more expensive for new players to even get cron stones than it was before. Crons are not a good thing to lean your entire game's progression system on because it makes the entire game more pay to win. It's 100% just that, that's the truth. You know, you're leaning on pay to win to supply your game and it's just never gonna work, okay? You should lean on cosmetics to supply your game. For example, I bet that they would make more money off of the outfit idea that I'm going to give them right now, I bet they would make more money off of one class outfit like this for each class in the game, all right, than all of the outfits put together for the next year. You give custom effects to a $90 outfit. I'm not even joking people would pay it. This price is good because people will be upset about it, but they will still buy it. We will change your lawn effects to green if you spend $90 on this skin. It's not too high that people are like, yeah, fuck that. It's low enough that people are like, oh, that's, oh, that's so high, but they're still going to buy it. Okay, that's the truth. They're still going to buy it. It is what it is. Because here's the thing. In BDO, a $90 price tag is really a $45 price tag if you're smart. And then if you use a 20% discount coupon, it's like a $36 price tag. $36 is much more stomachable, right? Because you get a 1 plus 1 box, you use a 20% off discount coupon. It's doable. People will stomach this, and they will make a fortune. I'm not joking. Thousands of outfits will get sold. You release one outfit for each class in the game that has custom skill effects at $90 an outfit. People will buy it and you will make more money off that one outfit for each class than you will off of outfit sales on the marketplace. Hands down. Tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars. Hundreds of thousands. You know, you know, funny thing. Everybody got mad about that Ari skin in League of Legends. The $500 Ari skin. Do you know how much money League made off that skin? How much money League made off that skin? Let's see. How much money did League of Legends make off of the Ari skin? The Ari Faker skin sold about 17 million copies at $500 a copy. There it is. There it is. That's total revenue. Are you sure? It says 17 million RMB. Oh, I'm sorry. This is in the first hour. I apologize. 
This is literally the first hour. It probably did do over a billion. The first hour that this skin was live, they made $2.3 million. Okay. One skin. People can bitch, whine, and moan about it, but it's a cosmetic. It's not pay to win. No one really gives that much of a shit. Nobody quit League of Legends because they had a $500 Ari skin. No one did that. People were upset about it because they couldn't get the skin because they're a broke boy. And that's the truth. Okay? Like, cosmetics are pay to win. No, they're not. Not in, not in League of Legends case. And in BDO, they're, they're not pay to win either. Um, they're not pay to win either. Like... I quit League because it's a shit game. Right, but not because they made the Ari skin. Agreed. But not because they made the Ari skin. Again, Black Desert should go in this direction. They should make a Divios skin, right? Or they should make like a like a Korean faker skin, whatever. Like, they should make like a... Like if, they, if there's like a uh, the best in guild tournament, wouldn't this be really cool? If the best in guild tournament... If you win the best in guild tournament... They release a skin for your your guild themed with your guild colors. I'd buy the shit out of that. That would be so cool. That would sell too, right? That that would sell too. It would also make it super hype. It would also make it super super hype. Like it's just so much better. It will just be Cho Nation. Cho's retired. What do you mean? It'll be Digi Nation. It'll be Digi Nation. Fortnite does it. Every other game does this. An Armin skin? Yeah, or if you win like a major Perlibus tournament or like the one tournament of the year, they, they give you a skin for it. Um, it doesn't have to be that though. It could be, again, the custom skill effects idea. They could sell that skin for $90. Um, price point, people would buy it. Like everybody would buy it. They wouldn't even think about it. People would just buy it. They would make a fortune. And you know, the funny thing is that giving people custom skill effects does not make your game pay to win. It's just a cool cosmetic. It's a way better way to monetize your game. No one's going to quit your game because, uh, because of it. They might get upset and stamp their feet, but they're still going to buy it. No, $90. You're saying that. I'm telling you, people will buy it because they'll do the one plus one box. They'll use a coupon on it. They'll make it work. They'll stomach it. More dances are a perfect example of like how they should monetize, right? The problem with requiring all of this to say, the problem with requiring cron stones for all of your gear progression is it makes the entire progression system of your game really laser focused around pay to win. It also means that cron stones are basically complete. Nobody can get crons at that point unless you buy them from a vendor, which forces it's really predatory. It's horrendously predatory because a player really wants to progress. They keep failing. They can't get the outfits off the market fast enough, and they're going to swipe. They're going to swipe. They're going to swipe because they, they need those crown stones. It's, it's incredibly predatory. It's a miserable progression system as it is. We need to get away from crown stones because it makes the game more pay to win. It also is a shitty progressive system to begin with. Making crown stones more available is something they are never going to do because, again, it hurts their current revenue stream, Right? That's why they will never listen to anything Zeroden is saying right here. Making cron stones available to players does not encourage players to buy outfits because currently that's their primary revenue source, right? I'm saying they need to shift their revenue source away from pay to win, make it about cosmetics. People will buy it, I promise, okay? Then cron stones can be readily made um, for the players or you can just shift away from cron stones and it doesn't hurt your, your income as a company. You can make a shift away from cron stones in general, and then it doesn't hurt your income as a company. Literally just that. Do you have the ability to, you know, use our, pri like, what are those, the new stones that you get for a sovereign gear? That comes from pinnacle content. That makes sense, right? Pinnacle content gets you pinnacle gear. But we need to have a way to introduce more cron stones into the game that isn't just either grinding in circles or buying them off the market buying them off a vendor it shouldn't be the only way i think if there was cron stones being rewarded from our pvp content even if you're just doing aos and you're getting like decent cron stones per hour you can buy a cron bundle that'd be great
there'd be a way outside of spending real dollars to kind of get ahead. I'm fine with them having their pearl shop being monetized the way it is, but I'm not fine with. So Zerodin just doesn't understand why like making cron stones readily available to players hurts their current monetization. He's like, oh, I'm fine with the pay to win, but let's let make cron stones more available to players. Well, then that hurts their their current business model. Like you can't hurt the company has to make money. They have to make money. I understand that you need to give them a different way to make revenue so that the current system can be changed so that it's better for the entire player base. It's just that simple. Cronstones being the only form of progression and then us not having a meaningful way to attain Cronstones other than a raw silver purchase. There's also the other point that buying Cronstones off the vendor doesn't feel rewarding. It doesn't feel good for the content that you're doing to be rewarded by just buy them off of the vendor. It doesn't feel good to just buy them off the marketplace in a costume and then melt that costume down. It diminishes the value of that activity. It makes it feel less rewarding. There's not as much of a dopamine in it. If you got a bundle out of doing a boss and then you open that bundle, you get a ton of cron stones and it helps you with your progression, that feels good. So No, it doesn't help anything, bro. Like that just that just feeds into the problem and it makes it, it, it lets them monetize less, so they're never gonna do that. Like, they're just never gonna listen to that feedback. You can't they're not gonna make crons more readily available. I've been doing this a long time and I've I've started to figure out what um feedback the developers will meaningfully hear and what feedback is gonna fall on deaf ears. And most of the time the feedback is gonna fall on deaf ears. Okay. In this case, you're not hitting the mark. Okay, you got to give them a solution to the problem. You got to give them a solution. They have to monetize that. This goes back to the game monetization. They have to monetize their game differently. Then they can change the progression to not be based on cronstones because they don't rely on that revenue stream anymore. So, food for thought. I feel like this might be a good way for us to kind of get PA's attention and how to help progress our game and not just make it like, oh, you know, uh, the game is awful and everything's bad. It's it's fine to have problems, right? We need to identify problems as a community. But what's better than identifying the problems is bringing a solution to the table. So that is one solution option. And I'd like to hear if you guys have more. So if you have more, please put them in the comments. I plan to send this video to Prolibus to see what they can see what they have to say about the subject matter. Okay, I'm just going to be brutally honest, and I'm really sorry that I have to be the guy to tell you this. They are not going to care. They have already seen this video. They don't give a shit. Okay. There's only like two forms of content that really reaches their ears. And again, I talked with some of the, the Korean executives when I was at the Idol Ball, and I was low-key probing them to see what I could do to reach their ears. I'm like, so you watch some of my YouTube videos? Like, oh yeah, we know who you are. I'm like, okay, so well, which ones do you are you watching? And then they listed them for me, and I was like, okay. So like I started to understand what content is actually going to reach the developers eardrums and this is part of the reason that i do the un podcast um and to be clear there's about 80 percent of the un podcast that they're probably not going to listen to okay but there is about 20 percent of it that they're like okay yeah we can do that that's doable but like in this case Tiberian they're not going to make grand stones readily available for 10 it hurts months. their business model you, good afternoon bluey so like, and they've already seen the video. You're fooling yourself if you if if you think that they haven't seen. If you think that this NACM Jam team has not seen this video, you're kidding yourself. You would be surprised how remarkably resilient our NACM Jam team is. They watch almost every piece of content that at least the partners put out for the game. Um. Targaryen Lord, welcome back for 10 months, man. Really appreciate that. Thank you so much, man. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And again, I can't necessarily like prove that with any amount of certainty, but I can say that I've talked to them at length and I, they seem to know everything. Yeah. If you think that they're not watching your shit, you have it backwards. They are 100% watching everything that you put out, especially if you're a partner, okay? If you're a, like a new creator, they might not see it, okay? But if you're in their creator program, you're in their partner program, they're going to see it. They're not going to say anything because they are really, really quiet 
when they see stuff, right? They're not going to say anything. They're just going to acknowledge it like they stomach, like they swallow everything else. They're just going to swallow it and move on. Okay. In this particular case, they're going to hear it. They might, they, they probably will give the feedback to the developers and the developers will... smile and nod at the monitor while their headset is off okay like this is this is what they do okay they don't hear i i swear to god and this is the brutal part i'm just gonna again be really honest i don't think our cmgm team can get feedback to the developers as consistently as a korean content creator can Okay, if you're a Korean content creator and the Korean CMGM team hears it, it's differently handled. It is way differently handled. If you're an NA or EU partner or even an SA partner anywhere else but Korea, um, and you make something, no one is pretty much going to hear it unless you include a Korean in some way. Um, and that goes for our CMGM team as well, because our CMGM team speaks English. Um, they are not going to listen to our CMs, period. They don't listen to them, okay? I know that they have given mountains of feedback, mountains of feedback. Nothing changes, okay? They listen to the best in class uh, tournament winners from 2021 or 2020, did nothing, nothing. They literally didn't, like they just sat in the call, nodded and then left and then no changes happened as a result of those calls. They didn't care. They don't give a shit. If you speak English, they do not care. All right? So like, and the same goes for their North American branch of their company, okay? That all the NACMGM team can do is smile and nod and say, we've heard you, okay? Because that's their job, all right? And they do a great job of it, to be clear. Like, they do an amazing job. I'm not trying to say that they don't do a great job or whatever. Uh, as respectfully as I can say, I can get feedback through to the developers better than they can. As long as I have a Korean on the show. That's the brutal truth. The problem is giving this to the NACMGM team, it's just not going to do anything. If you have to hand it to them, they've A, probably already seen it. B, probably already given the feedback because they do their jobs exceptionally well. And C, the developers have probably already ignored it. If you want them to hear your content... I'm not leaving. Okay. Those are off. Okay. <laughs> if you want them to hear your content, you need to make content that they are going to hear without having to go through the CMGM team. That's just the truth. Okay. And in order to make content like that, you need to bring a Korean onto the show and have it translated. I'm just being honest. That That is the only way that they will listen. Doesn't matter how many you could get. 3 million views on this video, they're not going to care. You speak English, your opinion is irrelevant. Okay. So like, I, I like that you made the video. You shouldn't stop trying to give feedback um, because you feel like it's hopeless. Like I, God knows, I have felt like it's been hopeless any countless number of times, guys. Like you, you have to understand my position is I try to make like feedback, constructive feedback content for this. And part of the reason I'm so frustrated, part of the reason I flipped out on Laffy before, part of the reason I'm so frustrated with the game right now is because I feel like I have, I have made countless videos trying to help them fix their game. I have, I have made, I have lost sleep. I have internationally pulled the games community together to try to get them to listen to our feedback I have literally, in my opinion, moved heaven and earth as a content creator to try to even get them to open their ears to the community, not even to me, to the entire community, to somebody, to anyone. They won't do it. And that's why I'm so mad right now. That's why I got frustrated with Laffy before is because it's not his fault. He didn't do anything wrong. I'm really, really mad with Pearl Abyss right now. Not the NACMGM team. And Laffy didn't deserve that. But I am mad with Pearl Abyss because particularly the Korean office, because they, they're killing their game. I love this game more than they do. 
There's the brutal truth. I love this game more than our own developers do. Like, and, and as evidence, I state all of the content that I have tried to make to give them feedback. You don't see anyone else doing that. No, no one else, no one else moves heaven and earth to try to give feedback like that. No one else brings people on the show to, to do stuff like that. Like, just, it just doesn't happen. Everyone else just grinds in circles for eight to 10 hours a day. Okay. And the developers certainly weren't, aren't going to do it. Okay. So like, I feel like I care more about their game than they do. I am super mad with them right now because they don't want to listen to their player base. Their player base is upset. I don't want to stop playing Black Desert, but I feel like I'm forced to. So I am incredibly upset with them right now. Like, and that's why every day that I've been live lately, guys, I apologize. I've been trying to keep it PMA, but you can tell I am, I am super frustrated. It is not with you guys. It is not with the NACMGM team. They're doing their best. The EU CMGM team is doing their best. Our Korean office are mentally handicapped. And like, I am, I am so incredibly frustrated with these people because Zirden will make an incredibly good YouTube video like this, trying to give constructive feedback about the game as misplaced or as correct as you think that that guidance is, they're not going to hear it. It could be the best feedback in the world. They're just not going to hear it. It's just a very frustrating time. I'm really mad. I love Black Desert so much. I'm really pissed off right now. I'm, I'm really mad. Like, and see if maybe we can get some new content added to the game that will help us progress Pinnacle content. Mm -hmm. Thank you guys as always for being here and supporting the channel. Um, if you haven't already, I don't have, I'm like kind of like a newer, uh, newer creator on the YouTube sphere. Do me a huge favor and just like and follow or subscribe, whatever you want to call it. I would not say he's new to YouTube. He just doesn't do YouTube very often. He's had a YouTube channel for a while. He just doesn't do it very often. Guys, he wants you to comment on this video. He's going to try to get it to the developer's ears. Okay. So comment on that video. Don't just comment on my react to the video. Um, I would recommend that you comment on his video. Um, and, and, and like the video, interact with it. Um, I will give, I, I gave my thoughts on it. I'll try to type it out in a quick comment here. Um, adding more. Uh, the problem lies in the monetization structure that they currently have. in place um we need to move toward more cosmetic skins uh skins sprays and emotes more fun ways for players to interact with each other to make money this way they can move away from the cron model it currently is killing their progression. Okay. That's as concisely as I'm going to say it. Okay. Um, give your thoughts on the video, guys. Um, yeah, Zero didn't want me to watch it, so um, that's my honest thoughts on it. I don't necessarily agree with him, but it is what it is. It is what it is.